Hey, Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I'm so excited today because I am not alone. I am joined by Cyprus's 2021 participant, it's Elena, and she's singing the song that is on everyone's minds, I mean, and in my heart right now, uh, because your song, El Diablo, really makes me feel like I want to be back in the club. I want to be partying on somebody's beach. It is, to me, my escapism song of Eurovision 2021. Hey Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I'm from Washington DC. Music can be feeling and fireworks. I got a new video, I got a new video. What do you think? Talk to me in the comments below. You know it, I made it. Hey, thanks. Hey Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I'm ready to go. Eurovision fam. Are you ready for the show? <laughs> I got a new video. I got a new video. How are you doing today? Hello, Alicia. I'm very happy that you love my song because I feel I feel these uh, exactly words that you said because it's a party song, right? El Diablo has this uh, production of uh, that we all love. I think we all want to dance. Yeah, I feel it from the beginning. How have you basically been staying busy this past year? Now, you were not going to be at Eurovision 2020, but what have you been doing? I mean, Eurovision was canceled for the first time ever last year. You know, we live in kind of unprecedented times. So have you picked up any new hobbies? Have you learned a new skill in this time period where we've been kind of stuck in the house, you know, to a certain degree? Of course, we all suck in the house for sure. Uh, as an artist, I usually go to studio and uh, write some music, so I had the time to write it. Uh, that that was a good part, you know. <laughs> uh, but actually, I think I think I find myself better as uh, as uh, I think all of us. It's been like kind of an interesting time frame for I think folks to get a little bit introspective and whatnot and and take a moment to pause. So it hasn't been, I think, all bad this yeah. year because your vision was canceled last year. The national selections were really big and sort of important to some of us. Did you watch any of the national selections this year? And if so, were there any songs that maybe didn't win uh, to come to your vision this year that you liked or any national selections that stood out to you? Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, it was uh, like from Sweden, Baila Baila. Uh, yeah. Uh, from France, Voila, Voila, yeah. <laughs> Uh, from Russia, uh, bitter words. Russia basically surprised us with the national selection and then it ended up being so great. I think we had like two, three days notice and then there were actually like really good songs at their national selection. And speaking of sort of national selections, I saw your performance at Mad Walk and, and I couldn't help but think that if Cyprus or Greece were to have a national selection, it would be something like Mad Walk. I love the clothes. I love the performances. Uh, we had Tomta performing. I thought the performance was great. And I think for a lot of Eurovision fans, that might have been kind of our first introduction to you, but you've been making music for quite some time. But I think just where it hit, and especially us like being kind of stuck in the house, I was watching Mad Walk as if this was the national selection. I mean, we knew you were already going to be representing Cyprus, but I was watching it like, okay, you know, this is like the national selection I feel like we would get. Oh, um, you mean, uh, you said about that? La, da, da, di, da, 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 da. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I am a disco lover too. Uh, uh, at the young age of me, I remember my parents have all the all the discs of uh, all the anthems or everything about uh, about the disco hits, and I take it, and I have the opportunity to perform a disco song. So in Mad Work, so I hope you like it because you feel that it, it was more close to me. So fun that I was performing this. Uh, this song because I love I love it you know what I mean I, it's a, it's a great song when 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 I have um, the opportunity to have good songs in my in my performances I feel great 
That's it was from El Diablo too. Yes, I am loving El Diablo. And and my question is sort of if you had to describe your musical style, mm. how would you describe your musical style? Yeah. You know, I love I love to perform as um as a performer. Like like dancing and singing together. So uh, the product the production maybe it's that it's close to me is more um um, I want to say like uh, uh, festival music that people for people to can uh, to can understand that uh, we're having fun in every position. I feel I feel it's more close to me. Dance music, disco music too. Um, I love the hits. After a year of being stuck inside, I just want to like envision myself like on the beach, at the club, dancing. <laughs> exactly, like a, like a live beach, like, like a live on a beach or a, a festival in, uh, in the beach. It's great, yeah, yeah. I feel the same and I wanna perform in a, in a festival too. I'm hopeful that we will be opening up and then at least maybe by August this year, I can create my own beach party yeah. and dance to El Diablo on the beach. Of course, of course, if I have this opportunity and uh, we are COVID free, of course, I'm gonna come in any position. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we perform in uh, live clubs or uh, on the beach, as you said, the beach parties or uh, in the live stages, but the best part of me is the festival things, you know, the crazy ones. My goal, I am an American Eurovision fan, and there are tons of people in America who might not know what the Eurovision Song Contest is. So if you had like 15 seconds, this is like, I won't count, I won't count you down. So you have time basically to pitch to Americans and tell them why they should watch Eurovision 2021 what would you say to them yeah it's it's a really huge huge show we all want to have fun and see the performers and the singers and the whoa it's the vibe it's it's like a party so everyone's gonna gonna have fun in this night as we will as we will want to do because the performers gonna have fun and then you take this energy and <laughs> and feel and feel the vibes of Eurovision. It's it's a good year because we all uh, stuck in home, as you said before, and we want to have something to to celebrate. There's no excuse for people to not tune in to Eurovision 2021, and this year is such a strong year. So I actually feel really good that more folks will tune into Eurovision this year than probably ever before. And they're actually going to be seeing an amazing, super, super strong show. But a lot of folks in America have now seen the Eurovision movie. Did you see the Eurovision movie? It came out like earlier last year. Was there like a favorite moment that you had in watching the Eurovision movie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yes, at the end, it was like the party that all the all the performers are, was together and you, you see this and this one and you said, oh no, he's, he's here, you know, <laughs> Conchita and everyone is crazy. Yeah, I, I wonder if like some Americans were watching this, like, is this real? Because I, I did have a couple of my friends like, yeah, when they had that sing the song along part, like, who are those people? I'm like, those were some actual like Eurovision yeah, winners. So I think, <laughs> yeah. And I think for some of them, they were like, is this, is this? I'm like, yes, yes. These are some of the actual like Eurovision performers. So it's kind of cool that there was that moment in the movie for those of us like in the fandom and in the bubble to kind yeah. of have that. So if you've listened to some of the songs, I'm assuming you said you heard Voila, like, what is the song this year at Eurovision 2021 that you would maybe want to steal and do like your own spin on the song? Oh, <laughs> I love the Australian song. Uh, it, you know, it's something different and I love the differences uh, of the, 
uh, performers. I like I like that. Yeah, I take this. Yeah, yeah. I could totally see the Elena Technicolor cover. I would definitely <laughs> be in to that like cover. Completely, completely, completely. Yeah. Okay, so I know you can't like totally give away what you're gonna be doing on the Eurovision stage. But I am the girl that's always talking about the styling. So I just have to ask, can you give us some hints? You don't have to tell us exactly what you're wearing, but can you give us some hints on what your styling on the stage will be? Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen Silek Rizariotis? Have you seen there? Yeah. Um, She's she gonna make uh, my dress and everything, whatever I will wear. I, don't, I can't say exactly what I will, but you know, it's a secret. Uh, she she gonna she gonna get my mood and give something from her to me, connected together. If if can okay. help. Okay, I I accept that hint, and I am now gonna be on Instagram. I just have to say anecdotally, ever since you were announced to represent Cyprus, I have been loving your Instagram account, account all the clothes, all the styling, the dancing. Yes, I've been following you intensely. So for folks at home, make sure if you love Instagram, you definitely have to follow her because the feed is amazing. Okay, and before we close out, we're gonna play a quick game of this or that. This is the game where basically I will present you with two things and you have to make a choice, okay? It's this okay. or that. Okay. <laughs> and it's gonna allow us to get to know you a little bit better. Okay, sure. Okay, so the first one is Brittany or Christina? Ah, Christina. <laughs> okay. Wine or beer? Wine. Okay. Romantic comedy or like a horror movie? I like both of them, but I keep the horror mo movies. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, if you're putting on, if you're going out for like a night on the town, are you gonna go with a red lip or are you gonna go with a nude lip? Let's see, but okay, I'm gonna take the red one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then if you had to choose like a decade of music that you're most into, and maybe you alluded to this earlier, but the 70s or the 80s, because the 80s are sort of having like a comeback, but then the 70s are pretty classic. So if you had to make like a tribute album, and it's the 70s or the 80s, which decade are you picking? Yes, about the music. I feel that uh, the 80s, it's it's for me. <laughs> okay, all and right. If I take the culture now in Greece, when I'm staying there, uh, we feel that at 70s, the 70s connected with the culture right now. I don't know what happens. In the center of Greece, it's like 70s vibes everywhere Ooh, ooh. So I have back from greece and i have the music uh, culture from the 80s from my parents and the uh, and i get as a child <laughs> all right well you just played this or that you passed thank you so much for talking uh -oh. to me I am so excited to see how you burn up the stage because I know you are going to burn up the stage in the Netherlands. Best of luck. We will all be rooting for you. 